York City, the Big Apple is home to Wall Street, Broadway, Fifth Avenue, and the biggest fire department in the world. Rescue One Manhattan is made up of an elite group of firefighters who are trained to save lives in the most dangerous situations. We've got a car in the water up by the Willis Avenue Bridge, which is a little bit of a haul from here, but at this time we should get there pretty quick. Hey, do you want a two? Huh? Are you one or two? I'm one. Just about all the diving in these rivers is what we consider black water diving. It's just the element of not being able to see anything. Everything's by feel. In less than nine minutes, Rescue One is on scene, prepared to enter the Harlem River in high-tech dry suits and scuba diving gear. I saw the taillights of the car floating in the water. By the time I got over here, I didn't see anything. I mean, the whole car was down in there. Who's on the way here? Okay, who's coming? Who's on the way here? But I want you in the water, all right? I got a backup dive for you. Can you down? about 20. 20 feet. Okay. All, right. All Rescue One firefighters are also expert blackwater divers. Hey, Larry. I'll get Larry, already. you can Put concentrate on my second diver, okay? okay? I will communicate with the divers. I listen to their breathing to uh, see how labor they're working. I make sure I remind them to check their air. Um, and so we just all work together so this way everybody comes up to the top and they have to. This was a lucky thing that somebody saw it happen, but it's not always the case. You have to start the search where they tell you it went in and work towards where you think it might have gone. That's why you had to bring the witness back right to where they were standing. Even if they were standing up on the bridge, you bring them back to the bridge because your perception changes. Lift that hand up, Frank. There you go. Lean back. You're on it. Stay on the surface till you get over it. We'll Minutes from arriving on location, divers enter the water, searching in pairs. As a diver, I don't particularly care if they had uh, the Cub Scout Jamboree band here. It doesn't matter. I'm just working with the guy on the other end of the rope. You're trying not to go so fast that you can't keep your breathing uh, controlled. There's a lot going on at once. We heard the tires spinning in the dirt. And by this time, we saw a vehicle backing up. And then it gave it another go and went over in the water. We've never seen anything like this before. A police helicopter brings NYPD scuba divers to the scene to assist firefighters with this rescue mission. Sometimes submerged cars can trap and hold enough air for a person to survive for up to 20 minutes. Time is of the essence. Seventeen minutes into the call, the search for the missing car continues with additional Rescue One scuba divers. Officials decide to examine another spot 60 feet away, as divers are convinced the strong underwater currents are carrying the car downriver. Float it up a little, the current. I think it's by the PD boat, Carson. Did you tell that to him? I told that to Weishank. Did you tell it to him? Because we would have got caught up on the pier. I think it would pass the ledge and started to drift up with the current. I think it's more where that PD boat is. An hour okay. or more. Probably at about 10 o'clock. I think it's at about 10 o'clock. It's probably at about 15. How's that on your back, Frank? It's good. It's good. It's an awful long way from the front to the drift. Buddy. Pick up the rescue stick. Police divers discover the car and its young female driver. 
Sadly, attempts to revive this apparent suicide victim are unsuccessful. A young woman drove a vehicle into the river. Apparently, the car had drifted somewhat. And by the time we were ready to expand our search pattern, the police divers had arrived, and they took the upstream portion and were able to find the victim in the vehicle. You got the handle and the Yeah, You got to cut it away, Mike. Equipment must be decontaminated after every dive. Unfortunately, in a city this size, we go in the water fairly frequently. People jump off the bridges, drive uh, cars into the water. Not a good thing. It's just uh, ever since I was a kid, you know, I knew what I wanted to do. Four, five, nine, one, go. Go on, go be MD or a high rise. Right here, could be a tenement. I mean, if you want to be a fireman and, and get up to a rescue company, there's only five rescues in the city of New York, so it's a pretty elite group of guys. You know, we're all tight, we all hang together, uh, we're all motivated, we're proactive. We got great bosses, you know, we train, we drill, we love it. We want more of it. We, go, uh, we can run all day long, which is not uncommon. You're going from a dive mode into a high angle mode, into a confined space mode, uh, into a fire mode and a rescue mode. Firefighting is never a single, it's not a single effort. It's a joint effort. It always is. We know what we do together collectively as a team. That's what the job's really about. People will never understand that. Okay, go up to them. Okay. Do they know that? My kids love the idea. They understand what I do is dangerous. They, you know, they're concerned, but they're also proud. It's, uh, and, uh, there's nothing more special than that, you know? Uh, you know, we keep going on and we do our job every day. Rescue One firefighters rush into action with a reported unstable 250-ton crane that threatens to topple over. The damage would be unthinkable. No! We're waiting to hear more information, but it, they say it's a water main break, and the water main is undermining a crane. Man at Rescue One response. Rescue One Task Force responding. Right now we're going down to West Third. 566 Guardia Place, across of West 3rd. It's hard for shelters to, to listen up, you know. We're trying to pay attention to the traffic and whatnot. Rescue 1 is requested a second five rescue test. 10 4 is being assigned at this time, Ken. Rescue 1, 10-4. 4 5 6 Dispatch to 4 one 3 10 times out of 10, they're going to something. We're going to something major. Uh, injured workers, major trauma runs, uh, plus fires. You know, we go, to, we cover any fire that happens in Manhattan all the way up to 125th. Probably an emergency because we're not putting our air masks on. The crane's enormous size and eroding base has firefighters on high alert. This thing goes over someplace in the street, there's going to be some serious damage. There's 310 foot of boom up there. Don't hide easy. So there's a water main break underneath the street. It's coming up through the street right there. I think that the break in the main may be a larger or more, uh, a lot more water than they think it is right now. 
All that water is coming underneath here. It's down there and rushing into that trench, which is undermining. We're trying to determine if it's undermining the earth next to this thing. Because if it is, then we have a collapse danger. We have a crane here with 360 foot of steel boom on there. It probably weighs over 450,000 pounds. And uh, right now we're concerned that this water main is not washing out the undercarriage that uh, the crane is standing on. They're worried about it toppling over, uh, possibly into this building, which is fairly new. We call 911 just to be safe. We don't want to lose the crane. Uh, we're concerned that there could be a washout underneath the uh, under the crane. It's very hard to tell without opening the street, and that's why we asked Rescue One to come. Perhaps they can get uh, use some of their equipment to get a better idea of what's happening down there. They're going to set up a transit, which will let us know if the crane is moving. This could be a big, devastating blow to us. We're anticipating what could happen and doing our best to avoid uh, any major problems. What I'd like to do is get somebody in, in there uh, and I'd like to like to monitor the, the level in there and make sure there's no movement in there, all right? All right? Uh, at that point, then we can see if there's any kind of drifting at all. If it moves a little bit out of level. Everybody's name and stuff, all right? I got to let them know right away so we can clear everyone out of here. Safety over here is the main factor because, as you see, we're working in between two buildings and we don't really have that much room to swing around. Plus, we have the traffic in the daytime. They're dropping the boom on the train. Um, in case something does happen, it's a just in case move. Uh, this way, we don't have to worry about anything collapsing. If uh, the worst case scenario at this point is a giant hole opens up and swallows the crane, uh, we don't have to worry about this killing anybody. Right now, we're, you know, the, the crane is stable. Uh, TAC just told me there's no movement. It's under 1,000 pounds. So uh, if we monitor that crane, and, and we, you know, if anything, it's not going to just collapse. It's going to lean over. You know, mm -hmm. once we see movement, then it's a different ball game. You know? Then okay. let's get everybody out of here, out of here. And, uh, so your suggestion is leave the rest of the EP. Uh, yeah. Concur? Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't open up any more of the street or drill anywhere. Okay. After consulting with experts, officials agree the crane is safe and secure. Basically, we're done for the moment. You know, hopefully we won't have to go back. And at any given moment, we can be going to something else. Rescue one, go. Uh, redirecting you, four, five, and nine for a building. Rescue. Four, five, and nine for a building, Send four. Building down low Manhattan, down the Wall Street area. They're trying to locate the fire and they haven't found it yet. So we'll come in and help them with the, with the uh, thermal imaging cameras. It's a great tool for locating the fire. It sees heat through the smoke. And there's four more, four more units. I was wondering when this was coming. Look what side of the road we were on. It's a reported working fire at this time. But once they get there, the lieutenant will go to the chief. And uh, he'll actually tell him where he wants the rescue to operate. And usually, if it's on the floor above the fire or the fire floor. Hey, hey. In just over 10 minutes, Rescue One firefighters enter the Wall Street High Rise building. We had a smoke condition earlier, and now we have an odor. We believe it's related to an elevator malfunction. Clause 16, which is in the high rise bank, the fall that's point. Start in that area. Let's see what you want. The elevator shaft runs the entire height of the building and must be thoroughly checked for fire and smoke. Chief is trying to make a decision what floor he's going to send Rescue One up to search. Right. So he wants us to go up with the meters 
you know, just in case there's a lot of carbon monoxide, and you should have a mask on if you go up, definitely. Uh, we have no smoke condition at this time. We have tested all that. This is smoke chase. We have smoke from 12 up to 20. I don't know where it originates from. So you have to call more units to keep searching different areas. You don't know the intensity of the fire or anything. You know the situation. You know you have smoke. They're looking for a missing elevator. How are you making out, Jake? Malfunction and some electrical stuff burnt up because there's uh, electrical smoke odor on the top floor. At 9.21 p.m., firefighters locate the source of the smoke, a burned-out elevator engine. We believed it was an elevator early in the operation. We had an indication there was a problem from the elevator control panel early in our uh, checks. And we uh, were able to uh, find uh, that that was the problem. The new kid we got, we call him Sweet Pea for now. I don't know what else his nickname will turn into, but his other company sent the gift. Joey wants to make a presentation to our new man, Todd uh, Smith. I got this one tonight. It's a senior man of Rescue One. And I opened it up. And actually, it was sent as a presentation to one of our new members. And without my glasses, I could use a little help here. But I think it says, yeah, help me out there and see what that says. Senior man, please give this to Todd Smith. He forgot to take it when he left. I wonder what it is. Oh. Uh, look, looks like a shaving kit. <laughs> the, uh, oh, it's a shaving kit. It's yours. Shaving kit. Oh. It's got play shaving cream in it. It's play shaving cream. Lion cake. I look young. They say I don't shave. Oh, I am? No. What do you mean? Yeah. It's a um, joke of my last firehouse. It's busting on me. Being too young. Looking too young. They say I don't shave. I shave like once a month. 